Hey folks! Welcome back to Let's Play Light Crusader! I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and in our last episode, we were duped. Duped, I say! But I got to talk about languages some more like a giant nerd, so you know what? Everything worked out okay in the end. Oh, incidentally, if we go up these stairs, the creepy gargoyle statue in the middle of the previous floor has moved aside, and that's how we go up and down if we want to do that without using the teleporters. Moving on, in this room we have... Maximum Life? I mean, don't get me wrong, I am not complaining about that or anything, but... That is not what I was expecting to find in there. I thought that's where the plot was. But... No matter, there is only one other door, so let's follow the path. And you know what's weird? When I think of Light Crusader, one of the things that comes to mind is this room. And I don't know why, because it's just another basic transitional room. I just think of it fondly. And what in Pete Sampras is going on down here? Goblin, you have some explaining to do. And by explaining, I mostly mean dying, because this is not a dialogue-driven RPG. What am I, Mass Effect? Get out of here with that. What are you doing? I don't know why you're digging this hole. You say anything different? Oh, you do? Man, if only you two would talk to one another, then you wouldn't be so in the dark as to why you're digging this hole. And hey, could be worse. You could be digging it for no reason at all. Anyway, bye! So, the theme for this floor... The brief distraction, incidentally. I think this is the only double-sized safe room in the game, and it's only this big to make the overall shape of the map make sense. Because... You know, I have been relying on the map super hard in this playthrough. Hello, miniature goblin. I saw you had the wrong palette there just now. But that's okay, because when I get scared, I change palette too. I turn a vibrant shade of turquoise, which is a crying shame, because then I don't coordinate with any of my outfits. No, I don't know what I'm talking about either. It's Simon! The adventure game version of Insert Puzzle here. Although, thankfully, this one is kind of short, so I don't need to pay masses of attention. Right, right. Down. In fact, I'm pretty sure that's the last combination for this lock. Excellent! Later on in the game, you have to do chains that are like 12 long, and it, it, it just gets completely ridiculous, you know? Oop, that's not the right way to go. <laughs> I need something before I can go through that door. So, let's go this way instead. Oh, it's this puzzle! I remember this. This is the other puzzle that uses the time-stopping clock. So, we need to put the bomb with the shortest fuse on the pressure plate, so it will quickly lower and raise the platform. And then the one with the longest fuse needs to go on the platform, so we have time enough to shuffle it round. And then this one, we need to use that one as a platform. And this is something that I worked out on my own when I was younger, and oh goodness was I proud! Like, if you've seen some of the other games that I've played on this channel, you'll know that I'm not super great at puzzle games sometimes. So when I do get something right, it is that much better for it. Alright, let's shuffle... you? So the hanging in midair thing is supposed to happen, but I guess it's stuck on one of the seams? Alright, I can fix this using the tools that I have in my possession. Oh, but not like that. <laughs> like this! Only properly oriented. Yeah, there we go! The bomb has fallen down, and will hopefully count as close enough. And so it did! Awesome! Now, there is something sinister and nefarious behind that door. So let's go this way, and top up our health, before we push on. I probably won't need it, but... You know. Oh, what we will need, we're gonna head to the magic menu, and equip fire. Now, let's go. 
So, you may think that fire won't do a particularly good job, given that we're fighting a dragon and it's submerged in water, but it's actually a really legitimate strategy. I mean, not that we really need to use it, apparently, because we're doing pretty well without. <laughs> so, what I usually do when fighting this boss is to stand on this platform and spam the fireball spell. Reason being, our fireball spell has a longer range than his fireball spell, so we take minimum damage that way. And... <laughs> and we fall into the water like a nerd. That cracks me up every single time. And it's a shame that we beat that boss as quickly as we did, because I really like its design. Because there's something about a submerged creature that you can only see part of that is just... terrifying to me. Like, the head and neck of that dragon were three times our size. Can you imagine the size of the behemoth it was attached to? Because I can. And I don't wanna. It's, like I say, man, it's terrifying. Right, up you there. You go there. And that should be enough to solve this puzzle. And so it is. This allows us to collect... a costume. And this brings me back... I'm sorry, what? Huh. I didn't know you could do that. If you step in front of the laser beam, it will re-hit switches and stuff when we step back out again. I've only been playing this damn game for like 20 years, and I didn't know you could do that. Anyways, finally finishing that sentence I tried to start just now. The theme of this level is the goblins that we have been finding here and about the game. And to that end, there's a big chunk of rooms in the center of the map that serves as the Goblin Village, and you can just... explore. You can go through it at your leisure, and you won't be attacked. Although, before we do... Let's see what that costume does, how about? Check out my new cosplay! I'm a goblin! With a weirdly pointy head. But now we look like a goblin, these guys will let us pass. And you can also speak to the goblins in the village, including two that you can trade with, which is actually pretty useful. And you can also do a little sumo match that gets you a bit of money, but not enough money to justify the setup of the whole thing. And I also believe we're stronger when we're wearing the goblin outfit. Like, we get a guaranteed... Got that wrong! <laughs> Let's try that again. But yes, I think we get a guaranteed critical hit every time we attack as a goblin, but we are way slower in attacking, so I think, in terms of pure DPS, we're better off just using the sword. Now, that should be okay. Also, I'm pretty sure this isn't the solution to the puzzle. Like, there's a sliding block up there to the right of the room that I'm not using, but... This is how I have always solved this puzzle, so... This is how we're doing it. See? Problem solved. The barrel is up here and cannot come back down. Unless you push it off the edge, which I have done in the past, and there is just no way of redeeming your cool status when you do that. Like, you have to... You have to go and lie down for a bit. Now, in this room, we can use these lamps to change the direction of the wind, and we need to guide the silver boulder over to the pressure plate. And it's a little unintuitive, because the lamps are at cardinal directions, but the wind moves in ordinal directions. Or, look at the wind particles for a better explanation of why that's an issue. I mean, there's no threat of anything, it's just a little frustrating because you have to walk against the wind to move, and you it's just slowly enough to be annoying. I mean, case in point, look at this. And it doesn't help that I'm so used to doing the lunge attack all over the place, but the lunge attack is also affected by the winds, so you'll just keep flying around the room and missing. Not so different from when I normally use the lunge attack, am I right? Yeah. Aw, oh, I thought I could hit the light with magic, but let, let, let's just do it properly. Oh! <laughs> Bit awkward. Hey guys, don't mind me, just regular, actual goblin coming through. How's it going, Greg? Still holding that rock? I hear ya. It's a living, right? 
So there is a neat quirk with the engine. When you're wearing the costume, the goblins won't attack you. And you can even do that on the later levels when you've passed the goblin village. I mean, it's kind of handy because they won't even react if you begin attacking them. Like, they're just constantly flagged as non-hostile as long as you are in disguise. But, like, do you see what I mean about the mace being so much slower than the sword? Legitimately, you're better off just being David and tanking a few hits. Like, you have higher health and the ability to use magic. And speaking of which... Bear with me for just one second. Just gonna sort that. Take that off. Go back into here and do a little bit of infantry management. Because, you know, that's what you want when you plunge into an arena fight that you aren't supposed to do until the end of the level. Because these guys are jerks. They are really strong, have a really high chance to just nullify your attacks. I mean, they're also good in close quarters and long-ranged combat. And, I mean, the best trick I found is the Thunder Magic, which, if you catch them in a good arc, will destroy them all in one go. I mean, at the very least, it will hit them, while your slash attacks probably won't. Oh, nice! That's a rare drop! Also thematically incorrect, because bronze is, you know, bronze, not silver. But, we have an upgrade from our sword. It's gone from thunder to lightning. We, we skipped an armor slot and gone straight to bronze as well. Oh, and neither of those names were changed internationally. Even in Japanese, they were Raitoringo Sword or Do Bronzu Arma. I'm glad those goblins don't mind me stealing their stuff and continuing on with the game. I mean, assuming my stage directions are correct. And I don't think they are, because they sent me that way, which is a side route to get some optional loot, but... You know what? It'll be useful in the long run, so I'm not I'm not too put out by that. Now, we transform into a goblin once more, and continue through the village. I wonder what all the other goblins make of this. Like, here's just this weird pink one strolling around like he owns the place, and... Occasionally going rogue and murdering them for no reason. Like this guy. Do you have anything to say? Oh, that guy's just worried about his cows. What a hero. And very well remembered anyone who actually did. Well, that's not the right way either. But this is something I like about this particular level. There are lots of rooms with nothing in them to create the idea that this is a village and these are people's homes. I mean, as with the double-sided safe room, they are had they're there to, like, make a specific shape with the map, but, you know, let's just say it's emergent storytelling, and shut up. Oh, speaking of which, right, I asked what do the goblins think of us? Not much is the answer that I'm going to go for, because if you look at it, they absolutely have a caste system going on. Because some goblins have clothes, and some wear rags. There is a chief who has the fanciest clothes of them all, so, like, I guess being a pink goblin makes us the underclass of the underclass, and that is not a good position to be in, I tell you what. So, y you know what? The hell with you! I cast off my goblin clothes and embrace being a human! Because the goblin's HP is capped at 100 for some reason, and we are about to fight a boss. But look at this, it's just, just the most treasury boss in the entire game. Look at it! It's just... A bunch of circles pivoting around to make faux 3D shapes, and it looks awesome! And also, there's like earthquakes and explosions and stuff. Also, I never took time to use magic against this guy, but... I, I think I've seen the error of my ways, because look at how much damage the Thunderbolt's doing! Oh, gotta run! So this is the first boss that employs some kind of strategy for avoiding some of its attacks. At least that I've noticed. Because those fireballs will target us, but if we keep walking, they will miss. And down it goes. I cannot believe I used to have trouble against that thing. Oh, and it doesn't have a name, incidentally. Internally, it is just referred to as Huge Spider. So, there you go. Now, hopefully the thing I need is at the end of this room. It would make sense, because it's a plot item, and they are usually hidden behind bosses. 
bosses and deceptively difficult isometric jumping puzzles. <laughs> One of my several weaknesses. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna do this the smart way. I'm gonna equip the wind magic, and I'm going to cheat. Carefully though, because you can cut these boulders down from the ceiling, and then you can't get to the switch at the end, and then you feel like an idiot. Which most assuredly is not what is going on right now, because I am a smart man, and I know what I'm doing with this puzzle. See? Like, I'm, I'm waiting for the platform to line up with us, and then I'm gonna use some magic to open the door. Yeah, that's what we came to collect. I can see why you'd leave a giant spider to protect a tap handle? Now, given that we have the tap handle, we are at a bit of a crossroads in terms of what we do next. But since we're already at this end of the map, we're going to do the optional stuff first. That way, I didn't make a mistake in going to collect that new sword, because now we're consistently not doing plot stuff. Good save. Oh, and for anyone wondering, my gameplay notes read, Follow path back, speak to God to proceed. Which... I mean, technically I did do, I just went to the wrong guard first, so now you know how that mess happened. Now, I forget what's in here, but it sure is something. <laughs> also, there's an interesting thing. The goblins with the crossbows aren't properly flagged. Goblins are supposed to make that ooh noise when you hit them, but this guy's making the generic hit noise. I've only just noticed that. Also, we gained gloves named Power. Something, something, the wizard by Nintendo. Now, you saw this little dealie on the wall? If we use... Not that one. <laughs> the tap handle. The entire basement has flooded, killing everyone in the goblin village and every sub-basement for the rest of the game. Truly, we were the biggest monsters of them all. Although, interestingly, I made the Power Glove joke not strictly accurate. It's a glove named Power. However, this game does have a separate piece of armor called Power Glove. It's a weird quirk of the original Japanese. Because in the Japanese version, the glove we picked up was called Power Knuckle. So, you know, the power translation makes sense. What the English version calls Power Glove, the Japanese version calls Kote, which can translate to gauntlets, but it can also translate to Trowel, so you, you can see why they'd pick a different name for that. Especially since Gauntlet is an item we already find in the game. And also, for a bit of behind-the-scenes info, I'm playing this with a GameCube controller. The best controller, fight me, Simon. So you might be wondering, is that why David's movements are all floaty and weird? To which I reply, oh goodness no! This entire game is all floaty and weird. That's just how it is. But I like when games own that, you know? Like, yes, we have screwy physics, so let's make those screwy physics part of the required gameplay. It's like when the Donkey Kong Country guys realize you could do mid-air jumps, so they just put in a bunch of stuff required to do it. Speaking of, let's see how long it takes me to do this. Okay, first time! Why not? <laughs> Do you know how much trouble that series of jumps gave me when I was younger? Because I would always misfire and kick the boulders all around the room and that, that... That has saved us literally minutes of editing! Now all we need to do is lower the water level again, and return to the Goblin Village to see what our actions have wrought upon these people! Also, right, you know what else held me up when I was younger? I couldn't work out how to take the tap handle off the wall once I'd used it. Because David very clearly leaves it up there, and the sprite persists, so I thought it was a one-use item. Boy, did I feel stupid when it was still in my inventory. <laughs> okay, this is something that I'm going to show off later. I mentioned it earlier, I think. It, it gives you a little sumo minigame for a chance to win some gold. And we might need it, depending on how my off-screen grinding antics go. I mean, those are literally the only two options in the world, why pretend there is a third? 
Oh, really? Really, game? Wait, is this the same sequence as before? No, it's gonna be even easier somehow. I am fine with that. Okay, right, 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 up. Through we go! Yeah, let's do the plot stuff first. This is the door that Key 3 opens. And inside, it's Cullen! How is this guy solving all the puzzles and stuff before us? Like, just, how? Again, translation change between versions. In Europe, this guy mentions that the, the princess is studying ancient scripts, while the American version, it mentions, Seek the princess! She can read ancient scripts! Without explaining why. And I sure hope that guy managed to escape in the... like, three seconds it took me to get up here and flood the basement. He'll probably be fine, he's survived worse. Incidentally, we have... Oh, that's cool! Like, if the fire magic hits something, then it will either split in two and dissipate, and uh, just... D the fact that it will react appropriately is a nice little touch that didn't need to be there, but it's so cool that it is! It's like breaking the eggs open before eating them. Anyways, we have everything we need to finish up on level 2 and move on to level 3, but I'm going to keep exploring this way so we can fill out the map and show everything this game has to offer. Alright, that's enough screwing around. <laughs> I would always try to push the barrel down the path on its own without cutting down the boulders, but that's too tough, so let's do this properly. There we go. Now, I do believe there is some absolute garbage behind this door. Answer the riddle. And so there is. I will be back in a second, folks. I like having tea and scones, yes, for my breakfast. Chainmail! And that's what it's called in every translation of the game, and it's worse than the armor we got from fighting those Captain America samurai enemies in the other room. And, like, even if I didn't already have better armor, I don't feel like I've accomplished anything by doing that. You know, the, the Simon portions of this game don't have any degree of challenge or skill to them, it's just a case of... Can you write down 11 letters as the game gives them to you? And... For a video game, ostensibly a challenging test of the player's skill, to not do that is a bit of a failure. Ah, oh, whatever. Let's just lower the water and continue onwards. We have raised all the in-game event flags we need to do to go to the next part of the game. But, there's a little bit more of the level that actually needs exploring. Although while we do, I have to say I am not overly keen on this level as a whole. Like, it, it, it has some good ideas. Um, I like that we have to infiltrate the village to get through. And I like that the map has a lot of empty space, suggesting the village is bigger than it is. But it's just... I don't know, it's lacking something. Am I stuck? Okay, no, there we go. <laughs> But, like, when I'm picking on games, I will often say, it's pretty much just more of it. As in, why would you buy the new FIFA game? It's pretty much just more of it. And that's what this level feels like. Oh, but look at that. The platform dropped off the barrel right where I needed it to be. Like, is that your way of apologizing for me comparing you to FIFA 96 game? Because, because I'll take that. I'm just going to re-goblin and see what these guys have to say. Bet they'll tell me I smell like a human. Yeah, see you, judgmental dick. Well, you have the wrong color palette. How'd you like them up? Maximum life! How'd you like them maximum life? Because I happen to like it a lot, thank you very much. Along with good sentence structure. Huh. I thought Cullen was supposed to be in that barrel. Like, I am dead sure there's a barrel in this game where you attack it. It explodes, but Cullen just pops out and says hello. 
Hopefully I'll find it later on, because it's a really cute little scene. Alright, what do you have to say for yourself? Has he tried looking, like, three screens to the left? Because that's where it was. Also, do you mean this room full of food? Because this isn't a room full of food at all. You've got, like, an ugly carpet, and that's about it. Iron Gate. Hmm. Yep, that's what that is. 10 out of 10, sign. Would read you again. And you know what? I'm not even going to take my costume off. I'm going to infiltrate the castle as a goblin. Now, weirdly, out of all the NPCs in Green Row, there are only four of them that will notice we are a goblin. And the number's only that high because they copied and pasted the palace guard three times. And that's not the room I wanted to go into? <laughs> it's this one! Probably. Yes! Hey, princess. How's it going? You know, come to think of it, it's pretty cool that you haven't been kidnapped. Because that's the usual role of princesses in this kind of a game. So the stone tablet is probably the most heavily retranslated thing in the game. The UK version feels a lot more Englishy than the American version. Um, and in turn, the American version includes some extra lore. Like it says that the titular Light Crusader was created by Garriott and his eight wizards. Or the English version just has it as a thing that exists out there in the world to find. Now, before we go back to the labyrinth, I'm going to go this way and collect a red potion that's just out in the open for anyone to claim if they want it. Probably should have collected that in episode one. You know, it, it, it may have saved my life against the first boss. But whatever, here we are. Now, do you remember in the last episode we found a sextant in a hidden chest? I'm going to show off what it does. Is it that one? Yes! When we use it, it sends us to any teleporter that we have found in the game. And it's also hilarious to 13-year-old me because it has sex in the name! <laughs> Now, how do you propose we solve this problem? Could it be to do with the name that we were literally just given and told not to forget? You betcha! And this leads us to the stairway to level 4, which we will explore in the next video. Join us next time for more- Whoa! Okay, <laughs> let's not do that just yet. Join us next time for that. And until next time, goodbye!